couple, three weeks ago, on Wednesday night, and that's why I'm treating it on Wednesday night, uh, the issue came to me about the uh, Daniel's 70th week, and Daniel's 70th week not being a consecutive week, but split, uh, which has been going on uh, for quite some time. But uh, uh, I'm not going to be uh, meddling with business, doesn't belong to me, so whatever it was, it was, and about around 2000 or so, first time I heard of this kind of thing was uh, Chrissy called, they were Toledo already, and said, oh, I guess what's coming out of Pensacola, there's only three and a half years left, you know, and, and uh, you know, Lord's come back, and it fit all the, you know, picture as far as 2000, but 2000 came and 2000 went, and Lord didn't come back, and about 2000, 2001, uh, it came up again. It came up big time around here. Uh, it came up big time, and so uh, uh, I guess probably maybe a fraction better than what uh, was the other night, but not a whole lot better. It did not make me very happy, uh, just to put it mildly. And uh, so uh, I spoke my piece, and uh, uh, nonetheless, I said, uh, if in fact this thing is so, uh, and we're going to be in all honesty, then we've got to alter some, uh, quite a lot of stuff that's uh, been put out of Pensacola, being uh, the big old chart uh, that everybody's seen forever and ever. And uh, also, uh, it would have to do with uh, uh, various things and books that uh, have been taught by uh, Dr. Uckman, published by Dr. Uckman, would no longer fit. Uh, and then kind of uh, after the episode and uh, I put a couple things, a couple other things out. Uh, then uh, the uh, three and a half year fellows, they, they left. And so things stayed quiet for uh, a good while. And what you have down Pensacola is uh, that's what you have down Pensacola. That's not my deal. That's not, uh, it just is what it is. And uh, what goes on is. Uh, uh, even this little incident uh, here is, as far as I'm concerned, tip of the iceberg. Once Dr. Ruckman goes, uh, you're going to have this popping up, this popping up, this popping up, and this popping up. And they're going to come from everywhere, and somebody's going to say he was incorrect here and he caused, can't defend himself, so he's incorrect here and he's incorrect here, and he was wrong here and he's wrong there. And uh, that's just uh, so what we've got going at this point, as far as I know, uh, we have that uh, no longer is Daniel's 70th week straight through seven years, uh, but it's three and a half years uh, being from uh, the time that Jesus Christ got baptized until the cross of Calvary's public ministry, three and a half years. And then uh, uh, at that point, shuts down until uh, you got another only three and a half years left to go. And uh, under uh, the teaching around here, that's not what has been taught for 41 years. That's not what's going to be taught tonight. Uh, so, uh, Ron here, I, being the pastor and the teacher, I teach the doctrine of Bible Believers Baptist Church. Uh, whenever uh, there's any dispute, here's the guy you want to come to. Uh, whenever there's a, uh, uh, but not a good idea to, you know, start this and this and this. Uh, that's just not, uh, that's not too good. So, uh, whatever happened, not good. My side, either side. It uh, was not a good picture two or three weeks ago. Uh, it kind of blew me away, actually. I did not know it was already circulating in the church, uh, but uh, that's okay. Uh, I Probably something I need to know, so it just came up, and it is what it is. I'll treat it best I can treat it, and uh, it is a position of your pastor. It's a position of uh, the pastor of Bible Believers Baptist Church, uh, and so uh, that's it's going to be as has been taught, and as you're reading the Word of God, I read seven years, 62 years, one year. Seven, 62, one. And of course, seven years being a week uh, in the Bible, you know that from uh, Genesis chapter 29 and other places. Uh, so we're, uh, uh, we're looking at that kind of situation. Well, anyhow, in the meantime, uh, as Dr. Ruckman uh, has, uh, he's examined quite a lot of stuff and he's, uh, uh, he's dished out uh, lots of material, say the least. Everybody knows that. Uh, you already have now uh, out there not only a split, uh, Daniel's 70th week being split, uh, but you have, uh, or the rather the uh, down to 69 and a half, one of three and a half to go. We got that's the way it stands right now. 
uh, but uh, according to the teaching uh, that has been going on. You have also out there, uh, again, I say it's only tip of the iceberg because you have as well. You have uh, for a while, uh, you have uh, that uh, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds, meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be at the Lord. Uh, and you have a three and a half day gap there. And that's been taught a good while also. Long about the same time, I would say, uh, the Matthew chapter 27, verse 52. I was informed that that three and a half days has now moved up to a 40 day gap. And that just shows you what is going to happen. Everybody, everybody wants to be the man, uh, the replacement man for Dr. Ruckman. Uh, and in so doing, we're going to be dealing with first one thing, another, another, another. And at this point, those are just uh, things come up. Somebody called me. In fact, Brother Kip called me, I would imagine, eight, ten years ago and says, uh, so-and-so teach that in your church? I said, no, and they better not teach it in my church. And because uh, I teach the doctrine at Bible Believers Baptist Church. So that's the way you eliminate the problems. Okay, uh, now, uh, in Second Timothy chapter 4, I want you to look at verse 3 and verse number 4 before we get into uh, Daniel chapter uh, 8. But uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and you'll notice the word sound doctrine. In the last day, it's going to be a difficulty. And uh, they're going to be jumping off the boat one after another after another. Uh, Tex Mars at one time was a good man. He is as anti-Semitic as anybody could possibly be now. Uh, so things kind of changed. We had people in here that one time were good, started dis, uh, dispersing anti-Semitic material, and Ken Pittman company come up to me one Sunday night and said, what's this? Uh, didn't come to me, but it goes to the people. Uh, didn't work. Goodbye. And every time that happens, somebody's out the door. It doesn't work. You got a problem? Here's where you come with your problem. And uh, that's the way to keep things in order. But to uh, disperse the materials around the church, that just doesn't fly. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 4 now. Look at verse number uh, 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and dead, his appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, or reprove, rebuke, exhort. Can't be all sweet stuff. Uh, it's got to be from time to time. You've got to pile it on. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and sometime, come on, let's go. All right, with all long suffering and doctrine. All right, for the time will come, they not endure sound doctrine. Last days, what are you talking about? Uh, difficulty with doctrine. Matter of fact, they don't want doctrine. Sound doctrine, they don't really care. Sound, unsound. And here's an example. Don Bergholz, little town, uh, Danny's hometown there. A uh, fellow had a Baptist church down there, and he uh, had it up to 70 or 80. Then it kind of didn't do anything, and uh, he had about 15 kids, and the kids grew up and left. And so finally the church uh, turned over to somebody else. His last message, which was about within the last year, was standing for the truth. The very week after he left, they brought the bongo drums in. They brought the whole nine yards of contemporary music in. They brought in a Pentecostal uh, pitch to the whole deal, and it went right off the deep end. That's what's out there these days. All right, so sound doctrine is uh, nobody much interested in it. Time will come to not endure sound doctrine, but after their own selves, after their own lust, shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Uh, having itching ears because of why. All right, uh, the things that you've been taught, you've been taught around here 41 years. All right, and how do that? Uh, I have no new, do new doctrine, uh, but they have been taught uh, for quite some time. As a matter of fact, generally, what you've been taught along these lines uh, was Clarence Larkin uh, a good while ago. And Dr. Ruckman uh, refined a couple of things there, uh, and you have a lot of the same type of thing. But you've heard it, you've heard it, you've heard it. Some of you all, like myself, you've been saved 40, 50 years, and you have heard it. So now we got itching ears. We want something new. Got to have something new to keep us trucking. Uh, so in the midst of all that, my obligation is sound doctrine. Itching ears, uh, well, doesn't matter. Uh, sound doctrine is still where it is on my side. I've got to keep this church sound, uh, irregardless of what you might want. Every new thing coming down the pike and desiring it because you're tired of hearing the same old, same old, same old. Uh, but I've still got to, uh, 
and you've got to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to endure it, but uh, nonetheless, after their own selves he- help heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. All right, in a situation, that's the picture that I'm looking at. People do not want sound doctrine. They want some new doctrine. Now I go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, look at verse, I think 19. Yes. All right, uh, and they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. And look at verse number 21. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Don't ever get in that pattern. Uh, take Patrick's hint and go out and win some souls. Get busy in uh, the last days and the clock is uh, ticking and you're running out of time. And uh, give it a big time witness. And I mean, everywhere you go, uh, put some kind of a bear the reproach. Put some kind of tag on yourself. Uh, try to win some souls. These people spent their time. They wanted to pick up on the latest. And, uh, you know, always some new doctrine type of thing. That's where we're at in the church age. And you would have to say that from 2 Timothy chapter number 4. All right, now, Daniel chapter number 9. Daniel chapter number 9. And verse number, uh, we'll go to verse number 24. Man, we're looking at Gabriel now. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. All right, thy people being Israelites. All right, 70 weeks, and you know the story there. Uh, it would be 70 times 7, or 490. And uh, the Genesis 29, Jacob for Rachel, uh, gives you a clue there and other places in the Word of God. All right, uh, the people upon thy holy city. Holy city, you know, to be Jerusalem. All right, so the Israelites and Jerusalem. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon Jerusalem to finish the transgression. All right, and to make an end of sins, and uh, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring an everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Uh, then you are looking at a situation that will not take place until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. Uh, and then all this will transpire once Israel acknowledges the Lord Jesus Christ to be the anointed prince and to be the Messiah. And once he's received by them, then what you're looking at, Jews, Jerusalem there, you're looking at a situation where the sins then become taken care of. Uh, we're not looking at a split type of thing. Everything here has to deal with, uh, you're talking about uh, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now... Uh, verse number 25, know therefore and understand. So I don't want a lot of confusion pertaining to it, though there is a ton of confusion out there more all the time. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Nehemiah chapter 2 uh, works out better than the issues with Cyrus back there. Uh, our tax Xerxes and uh, you can read uh, the book of Daniel by uh, Larkin, Clarence Larkin, and he describes uh, exactly why. Uh, we're looking at uh, Nehemiah chapter 2, our tax Xerxes, and the time beginning at that point. To restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. All right. Uh, and uh, we are, again, we're looking at uh, uh, shall be seven weeks. All right. And time element there, three score and two weeks, 62 times seven. All right, uh, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times, and that is after the 69. You have 69 that precedes that in the verse there. You have 7, you have 62, and then you have the troublous times, and of course you understand uh, that would deal with the tribulation. You and I at this point in time, we've all, we're already looking at perilous times. Last days of the church age, perilous times shall come. Evil men seducers shall wax worse and worse. Uh, ever learning, never come, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. A uh, ton of stuff out there. We are right at the wrap up, last days of the church age. All right, once we get out of here, you're looking at troublous times. And uh, uh, then it says in verse number 26, and, so 25 and 26 go together. You're dealing with a conjunction there. All right, and after three score and two weeks. All right, so you've got seven, you've got 62. Uh, you have got 
uh, 69 weeks and one to go. After and after, three score and two weeks. All right, now, uh, says, shall Messiah be cut off? Then uh, you are looking at a situation, and uh, uh, what can I say? Obviously, you can see what you've got. You've got to you've got to stick it in there. Sixty two weeks uh, plus seven sixty nine. Uh, Messiah is cut off. All right, the cutting off now is being taught as he being anointed when he was baptized. John chapter number one. And then you have uh, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. and uh, But the cutting off, because he was not accepted as the Messiah, uh, that does not say that he was cut off. Uh, the cutting off has to do, in the Word of God, sometimes, uh, cut off the remembrance out of the land. Cut them off out of the land. Uh, cutting off is a familiar Old Testament term. Many times it does deal with the issue of somebody it's all over. Cutting off as far as their life, they're done, they're all over. In this case here, obviously, that's what we're talking about. It's after 69 weeks. Now, the 62, he repeats two times. you got to get it. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every fact be established. So he repeats it two times. All right, 25 and 26. Three score and two weeks. 25, 26, three score and two weeks. All right, then he wants you to get the idea. You have seven, you have 62, you have 69, you have one left. And the tribulation is going to run seven years, not uh, dealing with three and a half years from the time Jesus Christ was baptized until he's crucified. And then after the church age, only three and a half years left. Uh, simplicity, according to Bob Jones Sr.'s truth, most becoming garb. And if you just look at the Word of God, you are looking at 7, 62, and that equals 69, you have one to go. It's not 69 and a half and three and a half to go. Or it's a cutting off. After three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off? All right, then that have to do with crucifixion now. Uh, and you know that, if you have any doubt about it, go back to the book of Isaiah. And uh, although... Uh, you can look in generally cutting off has to do with death. Give an example, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse number 2. 22. Proverbs 2 and verse 22. But the clincher is Isaiah 53 and verse 7 and verse number 8. Uh, Proverbs 2 verse number 22. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth. Then they're out of here. All right, the transgressor shall be rooted out of it. All right, uh, as far as the Lord Jesus Christ being cut off, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, verse number 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought his lamb to the slaughter, so he's, uh, he's virtually history, lamb to the slaughter, and as the sheep before his shears is dumb, op so he openeth not his mouth. Verse 8. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation, for he was cut off, has to do with his death. Obviously, you can see that. That's not stretching anything at all. He was cut off out of the land of the living. All right, so sometimes cut off out of the land, sometimes uh, cut off from this, that, or the other. Remembrance of them cut off. Uh, but generally, and this case for certain, you are talking about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Back to verse 26 in Daniel 9. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. All right, so the idea is where does three score and two weeks, uh, where does that come into play? At his crucifixion, or does it come into play when Jesus Christ was baptized and uh, the Spirit of God came down in the form of dove and later on talking about we found the Messiah. However, John the Baptist did not go out preaching Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. John the Baptist was preaching, Behold, the Lamb of God was taken away the sin of the world. Behold, the Son of God. Uh, that was John's ministry there. All right, uh, Messiah, uh, be cut off. 
all right, out of the land. And uh, Isaiah 53 clinches that, what you're dealing with, the crucifixion, all right, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, the being the Antichrist, uh, that shall come, shall destroy the city and sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, Revelation chapter 12, and unto the end of the war, desolations uh, are determined. All right, now, uh, once again, you have uh, situations there that uh, you can, uh, the teaching now is to split it up, uh, and uh, at a baptism, uh, we are uh, looking at uh, the end of the 69 weeks. So the three and a half uh, years of his public ministry is the first three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. Not so. It has to do with Messiah being cut off. It does not have to do with Messiah being despised and rejected of man, which he was. Yes, uh, the Spirit of God did come down, but Jesus Christ was not cut off out of the land. Uh, he was within a very small radius, you might say, by our standards. Uh, Andrew preaches further out than what uh, the Lord did. All right. Uh, but within a very small radius, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was not uh, cut off out of the land. I mean, Galilee, uh, Cana of Galilee, the Lord Jesus Christ preached here, preached there. Uh, he was despised. He was rejected. Uh, but uh, you are not looking at the crucifixion, you're not looking at tribulation uh, being cut off. That uh, did not happen when Jesus Christ got baptized and they did not accept him as uh, the Messiah. Despised, rejected. But uh, in the meantime, you have three and a half years of his ministry there and then he is cut off. The 69 weeks do not end until he is cut off. And Isaiah 53 pretty well clears that up. Verse 27, he shall confirm the covenant uh, with many for one week. Now, one of the strange things that you have is that if you have the Lord Jesus Christ uh, at his baptism, uh, that being his cutoff point, since he was not accepted, if that be true, uh, then the next thing you have uh, would be that uh, following that, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, that gap in there, or that three and a half years, it would be a portion of the Daniel 70th week, or first three and a half years of the tribulation. Uh, however, what you have at the end of his ministry, and within hours of Calvary, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 24, and in Matthew chapter 24, as Luke chapter 21, you know the story there. He says, here's what's coming. At the end of his life, not at his baptism, at the end. At the end, he says, or virtually at the end, right before the cross of Calvary, he says, this is the beginning, not the end, the beginning of sorrows. And he goes on, lists all things that take place in the tribulation. Uh, he does that, uh, clears that up real good. And of course, in the uh, material that I listen to, that part is not touched. And I'm going to deal with some things then that uh, perhaps uh, do not match up to the Word of God. All right, uh, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, this prince, if all things, uh, if in fact we are dealing with... Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ being cut off at baptism, then the prince that comes obviously is the Antichrist. And you say, oh, it's no deal, so what's, why make a big deal out of it? Because a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And you actually would have to push, if in fact uh, that is true there, then the prince that comes, he's got another three and a half years to go. And you you have a very serious accusation against the Lord Jesus Christ. You know better, and everybody knows better, but you could actually press it that way. Capital P being the Lord Jesus Christ. Little P being the Antichrist. But if he's cut off his baptism, then what do you do with everything that follows after that? Little P, it doesn't go at all. Becomes a very serious matter if you can uh, think about what was said there. Uh, the covenant that the Antichrist makes, you read nothing about a covenant. 
you do read a covenant he made with the chief priest at the end of that, has to do with the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he did make that covenant. Then uh, Judas Iscariot, uh, he did not break that covenant with them. He delivered him to their will, and that is correct. He delivered him to their will, uh, and then he tried to negate the covenant and took 30 pieces of silver and said, man, what have I done? This is horrible. I betrayed the innocent blood. Uh, tried to negate the thing. But to say that uh, uh, you are talking about a covenant with Israel and uh, you read nothing about it. Okay, now, uh, when you read uh, different places about covenants, you always read uh, the words of this covenant. You read that. Uh, you read it different times, and the covenant will be identified what it is. You read nothing like that with Judas Iscariot uh, after uh, the Lord Jesus Christ gets baptized. Then the idea of he having signs, making him, uh, putting him in a place there of having a covenant, because signs always accompany the covenant. Covenant has words. There is nothing or no indication of anything between Judas and anybody else until you get to that covenant where it betrays him for 30 pieces of silver. The argument does not hold water. Not at all. All right, so uh, again, 27 shall confirm the covenant. And no covenant is mentioned. You cannot find a covenant after the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, after uh, he... Uh, gives in the apostolic signs in Matthew chapter 10, you find no covenant in writing. As you read all the other covenants in writing, you find no covenant whatsoever between Judas Iscariot uh, and anybody else until it's the chief priest. And uh, then they finally come up with somebody that lied right through their teeth. And uh, But uh, uh, he did not break that covenant, uh, but we are looking at one that he does. Then it obviously has to do with after the rapture, after we go out, in the seven years of tribulation. All right, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. There's seven, sixty-two, one. Being seven years, all right, uh, so is it split? Now, obviously, it goes from a horror story of uh, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, etc., and uh doesn't take very long until this covenant became, becomes pretty shifty because we've got to deal 2,300 days. And that gets you, that's even before you get to the middle of the tribulation. Uh, so things are uh, pretty shifty there. But it says, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right. And the midst of the week, then the Antichrist, the prince that shall come. It's going to be a seven-year tribulation like you have been taught. All right. Uh, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. All right, now, nothing like that went on that you uh, uh, read about pertaining to it, but it will go on, uh, and you have to read the book of Daniel, and you begin to pick it up in the book of Daniel. Sacrifice and oblation to cease. What happens, he comes in peaceably and with flatteries. Uh, he takes over the kingdom there. Uh, not too far off when all of a sudden he makes a major turn about face completely. All right, that thing turns real, real quick. Uh, and before you get, when you finally get to the middle, you are looking at a lot of chaotic situations there. Uh, you have a sacrifice, sacrifice, and oblation to cease in the sense of we're going to hold still with this sacrifice and we are going to uh, the sacrifice is going to be, there'll be sacrifice, but it won't be what we had over here. We had animals over here, and it will be uh, a people that we want nothing to do with, the Jews. And they will become the sacrifices. All right, look at Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, look at verse number 11. Daniel 8 and verse number 11. Yea, he magnified himself, all right? Prince that shall come, the Antichrist, magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and to cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Nobody wants truth anymore. You can imagine out in the middle of the tribulation, they certainly don't want anything whatsoever. And verse 13 then, then I heard one uh, saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, 
How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both to the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said, Unto two thousand three hundred days thou shalt sancti- uh, the, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. All right, you can't go 1260, uh, just half of the uh, Daniel 70th week, and there's no way that you can, obviously you cannot get 2300 days unless you make it one straight uh, seven years, and then you are looking at uh, 1260, 1260, that would uh, get you into 2520, and that would give you room for 2300 days. Now, uh, and we'll deal with that a little bit further on in a minute here. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you've got uh, the situation there of uh, uh, the front side of that, where uh, early on, takes it in with peaceably and flatteries, and then early on, it turns very wicked. And these sacrifice, daily sacrifices, are pushed for a while, and then suddenly uh, they are altered and cease. And if you wonder why, those Jews are told not to even come down to bail out, to flee, get out of there. It's because they become the sacrifice. What they had been sacrificing, there's a break, there's a stop, there's a halt to it. And we switch from animal sacrifices to human sacrifices at that point. All right, uh, that's what's going on. Got 2,300 days there. Back to Daniel chapter number 9, verse 27. Uh, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. All right, things change, but the sacrifices become human sacrifices. Last half the tribulation. Switcheroo. All right, and for the overspreading of abominations. All right, uh, like you read about uh, in Daniel 8, verse 13 and 14. Uh, horrible type of thing. And the children of Israel... Are said in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 13, uh, a tenth of them shall be eaten. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse number 9, they are whittled down to a very small remnant. The Antichrist is out with the help of the nations of the world. He's out, sets up a system to wipe the Jews off the map. Therefore, everything you have going now, it has to do with uh, anti-Semiticism. That never does work. It'll never work. It certainly will never work in Bible Believers Baptist Church. And if I've said that once, I've said it 50 times. It don't work. It did not work. I don't care who it is. You don't bring that into Bible Believers Baptist Church either. All right. Uh, said uh, the abomination, he shall make it desolate. Even unto, and they've got to bail out, uh, they've got to flee for their lives, they've got to run for their lives, they've got to go, they've got to get out quick as what they can, uh, until the city be without inhabitant. And you read that as well in Isaiah chapter 6, preach and preach and preach and preach. How long shall I preach? Until the city be wasted without inhabitant. Why is it without inhabitant? They've got to go, because they do not, they cannot stay, or they get wiped out. All right, spreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even to the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right, being Jerusalem, a place of desolation, uh, the temple, uh, it is desolate as well. All right, so here's the position. The position is Daniel's 70th week is seven consecutive years, and it deals with you and I as soon as we get out of here, the tribulation begins as quickly as we go, and it runs for seven years. It was not the baptism of Jesus Christ for three and a half years. Then the Lord Jesus Christ is crucified, and then we have the church age, and then we have the last three and a half. It is just like you have it lined up. Now for details, okay, lined up simple enough. Uh, you have seven, you have 62, you have one. Uh, you have that, you understand what the... Uh, the weeks would be dealing with. So Daniel's 70th week, a seven-year period of time. All right, you have to, uh, you've got to take a look at that, and you've got to uh, come to the acknowledgement that we, uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, has made mention of seven, 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 over and over and over and over again. That's major. If you break it up to 69 and a half and only have three and a half years to go, we are weakening the position. Daniel just says a few things about what generalities of what goes on. Seven, 62, 
uh, generalities, seven, and lets you know what goes on. More details are found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but especially Mark, uh, Matthew 24, and Luke 21. And then if that's not enough, uh, more specific details are found in the book of Revelation that deals with that seven years. But Daniel sets it up as seven-year uh, period of time. All right, now... Uh, what goes on Pensacola uh, and the CDs that came my way uh, obviously the big uh, the big deal was dates I got two CDs, number one, Judas Iscariot, and that part, all right. But the second one that deals with the chronology, uh, it was major pertaining to dates, dates, dates. Uh, a list of chronologers was given, and of course they varied one way or another. They varied... Uh, and because of that, you can, you can find somebody that fits your system. You can split that seven years, and you can find some chronologer that'll work. You may have to work at it, but you'll find because chronologers are not thus saith the Lord. You've got to get that. You've got to realize that, uh, you can find somebody that's going to fit. All right, here's an example. This is uh, Sir Robert Anderson. And Sir Robert Anderson was actually a detective. You know what a detective deals with? A spy detective. A spy detective, he is alerted to every little thing. He is looking for every minute thing. Sir Robert Anderson... Uh, he has the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he even got astrologers, astronomers in, and figured this out, and figured out the actual date being April the 6th, A.D. 32. And it's an article here pertaining to Sir Robert Anderson. Larkin takes his figures, and he works those figures around and says, not so. And he disputes somebody like that. All right? So when you come to the chronologers, you're going to find a variety of things. And in the uh, CD that I listened to, the bottom line was that Usher's Annals of Church History or Christian History was the best one. And uh, that was... Maybe three weeks ago when those CDs came my way. And would you believe, after all that, this is September. Bible Believers Bulletin, September this month, right now. And it says, Chronology of the Old Testament, Floyd Nolan Jones. This book comes highly recommended by Dr. Ruckman as one of the best Bible-believing works on the subject, basing its chronology upon the King James Bible. Dr. Jones lays out the timetable of the entire Old Testament, recycling, re reconciling, and many difficult passages. This book comes with a CD of charts, etc., and so on. Because chronologers disagree. Larkin disagreed with Sir Robert Anderson. Somebody disagrees with Larkin. Somebody says, uh, oh, all of a sudden we found difficulty here, and the bottom line is Usher. And lo and behold, uh, the bottom line is not Usher. 
the bottom line as of this month is whatever this guy's name is, Jones of some sort. This is an 1868 Bible here. And in every column it has a heading. And it says, uh, before Christ 90, okay, here's one. 1490. Uh, quite a lot of the headings there, it'll say about, before Christ, so-and-so, about, about. And that's your best bet, about. But to find something that works and base everything on dates, uh, really, it's not it. Now, if you would, look at Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28, verse number 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. There a little. For stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people uh, to whom he said, uh, This is the rest wherein you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. I think you ought to get it by now. It doesn't have to do with pulling out all these chronologers, finding one to fit your system, and saying, here it is. It has to do with, thus saith the Lord. Line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept. And you cannot make the chronologers line upon line, precept upon precept, thus saith the Lord. You cannot do that. And obviously, you would know that. Here a little, there a little, uh, and they uh, and be broken, snared, and taken. Uh, then if you're going to learn anything, it's going to have to be from the Word of God, line upon line, uh, one after another. All right, along those lines... And in view of that, Uh, if you've heard those uh, CDs, let me see your hand. Jim, have you heard them? You haven't heard them? Andrew? No, I haven't, haven't heard them. Okay. Ken has. Don has. John has. I have. And uh, All right. Uh, this is some of the difficulties that I have found with the CDs. And it's splitting... Daniel's 70th week. It's taking uh, the cut off at his baptism. And I said, despise and rejected, we'll handle that. But cut off, you don't handle that until Isaiah 53. Uh, that has to do with his death. Uh, so it's like shoving three and a half years before of the tribulation up ahead of the between the baptism and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ and making a part of Daniel's 70th week. Okay, difficulties, problems. And this is why I do not buy into it. All right, number one, the Lord divides things at 762, one. Obvious, you cannot argue with that. That's obvious. All right, number two, dates in these CDs are the major thing, the second one especially. Uh, dates are the big thing, and uh, uh, 20 years of working on dates and all these chronologers, uh, and you would have to say that that's pretty iffy because they all 
uh, they vary. And then to say that Usher is the best in the bulletin comes out and says it's got somebody that is the best and it's not Usher. Uh, so when you get to all these dates, I'll just say they are interesting. They are uh, intriguing, maybe. They might be impressive. They are not line upon line, precept upon precept. But that's a big thing. The big thing basically has to do with dates. That is the major argument of shoving it up uh, ahead of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, Daniel 8, verse number 14. Want you to take a look at it. You're looking at 2,300 days, three and a half years, Bible years, 1260. If, in fact, three and a half years are already history and we have 1260 to go, you're looking at 2,300 days. That is one big time difficulty. It's a big time difficulty in that you are looking at two years. And seven months and ten days, that is a lot of problem to have that much that does. So the idea would be to take that, uh, what, from 1260, take the distinction between that and 2300, the difference, 1040 days, a lot of days. And uh, shove that I had to do with the cleansing of the temple. Well, do you think it takes the Lord that long to cleanse the temple? Two years, seven months, and ten days? I don't believe so. Did you ever read John chapter 2, verse 14, 15? He drove them out right now. You ever read Ezekiel chapter 45, verse number 18? One day. So you have major problem with it. When you have, what are we going to do with it? It will work if you have seven years, it does not work in three and a half years. So now the next thing is, okay, we could just take that and we can uh, take those extra days. And, uh, well, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 39, they're cleansing the land, you know, for seven months. Cleansing the land is one thing. That's not cleansing the temple. The temple is another story. That's a one-day deal. See? So you have major problems. Something's wrong. Something is way off. Something is bad wrong. To take 2300 when you only got 1260 or even put the uh, 75 extra days of Daniel chapter 12 on it. You are still looking at virtually two years to cleanse the temple. That virtually defeats the argument in itself. But I will go on. All right. Uh, Okay, something else uh, along those lines. Uh, why would it take the Lord that long to cleanse the temple? Uh, when they made the golden calf in Exodus chapter 32, I mean, we can grind that baby to powder right now. Uh, he can make the earth and speak it in existence and even a recreation in six days. And we need over two years to cleanse the temple. Not hardly. All right, now, uh, the next one uh, being uh, why your pastor does not accept him as being uh, the doctrine of this church. Uh, making Judas Iscariot, uh, this covenant that is this mysterious covenant, uh, is alleviated by saying that uh, the, the apostolic signs or the signs always accompanied a covenant. If so, that don't make 
somebody having signs a covenant. It may be here's a covenant, signs accompany it. All right, say perhaps. But what about signs alone? All it says about Judas Iscariot there, he's one of the twelve, and uh, apostolic signs. You don't read anything about a covenant. Because they had the apostolic signs, that doesn't mean anything about a covenant between him and Israel. Nothing at all. And if it were true, then how about the other eleven? They as well, a covenant between them and Israel. These dream covenants, what are we talking about? If it's so, then how about Elijah and Elisha? They had signs and signs and signs. You read nothing about a covenant. They had all kinds of signs. No covenant. Argument does not hold. That uh, because he had signs, there was a covenant made. Although nothing's ever said, nothing's indicated, only the signs, because when there was a sign over here, there was a, a covenant over here, there was a sign accompanied it. But stop and think. That does make everybody who had signs have some kind of covenant going on. Because what you're looking at, when you get looking at uh, reading things, you're talking about the words of this covenant. And I can't remember exactly. It must be Jeremiah. That's about where I've been reading lately. So uh, somewhere in that vicinity there, I read that two and three times. All right. Uh, signs are not a covenant. There are si- These were given to the unbelieving Jew, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 21, verse 22, included signs, uh, being the unknown tongue, which was a sign. Uh, tongues are for sign. Uh, to the, not to them believe, to them believe not, the unbelieving Jew. All right. But no covenant mentioned. Objection number five. If Jesus' three and a half year ministry is the front side of the tribulation, Listen to me. He's preaching the wrong message. Is he not preaching the kingdom of God is at hand? He did. Mark chapter 1. Is he not preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand? He did. Basically through the gospel of Matthew. Wrong message. He's talking kingdom. Matthew chapter 24 In the tribulation, he that endureth unto the end, same shall be saved. Jesus is missing it. He should, instead of preaching that in Matthew 24, he should have started over here in Matthew chapter 4 when his public ministry began. And you know better than that, and so do I. Wrong message. If it is as has been taught, wrong message by the Lord Jesus Christ. He should have taken Luke 21, Matthew 24, that he called the beginning of sorrows. And then if that's the beginning, why are you waiting until the end of your life? Why didn't you take it up here to the beginning at Matthew chapter 4? And obviously there's a glitch there. I think you can get a hold of that. Objection number six is the fact that in uh, these couple of hours of CDs that I listened to, there was no mention of Luke 21, verse 24, Matthew 24, verse 8. At the end of his ministry, uh, nearly the end of his life, He talks about the beginning of sorrows. I would say, I want an answer to that, wouldn't you? But there there was nothing, zero, not touched. Uh, Seven, objection number seven. The Antichrist is revealed one year before the rapture. And I guess probably the passage is Daniel chapter 11 and verse number 24. A time. Time, times, and half a time. Of course, three and a half years. Time one, uh, times the two, one plus two is three, and half a time being three and a half years. Uh, Daniel 11 verse 24. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province 
and he shall do that, the Antichrist, which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers, he shall scatter among them the prey, and spoil, and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. Uh, and that is thrown in there, uh, for with the idea of being the Antichrist is revealed before we get raptured out. And one year before we get raptured out. Which means, and obviously we know all the material on Jesus Iscariot and such. And that's been revealed quite some time ago. But... Uh, this business here of being revealed a year before the rapture is an impossibility. It's an impossibility because Jesus himself said, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, son of man cometh. He illustrated. Somebody only said in their heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. And away they went. Off the deep end, they paid the price. He illustrated. Two will be in the bed, one will be taken, one will be left. He illustrated. Matthew chapter 25, the ten virgins, five are wise, five are foolish. Why are they foolish? Are they foolish because they're virgins? Not at all. Not by any stretch of the imagination in the Bible. They're foolish because they were not ready for the coming of of the Lord. They did not have oil in their lamps. They were foolish. They were not ready. And to say that you have a one year gap from the Judas being revealed uh, as being the Antichrist until we get raptured out, there's no way you can make that. That does not work. You and I are told to be ready because in such an hour as you think not, son of man cometh. You and I are told that when we get out of here, it's going to be in a moment, twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, I mean, you and I, we're going to get out of here instantly. We're going to be gone. You ain't going to have time to get ready. 2,000, everybody had it lined up where Lord's come back, 2,000. At 2,000, one of my friends goes off the deep end. And I mean, he went off the deep end. And I said, what's going on, brother? And he said, oh, yeah, I believe he's coming. I still believe he's coming, but we don't know when. He didn't come back, and we thought he was coming back. And they cut themselves way, way, way too much slack. It's an impossibility for that to be true. Because if you knew, that also goes for this three-and-a-half-day gap. The dead in Christ rise first, and three-and-a-half days later, we're caught together with them. If, in fact, that were true, then these worldly Christians could, they could uh, repent, weep, and pray for three and a half days and get out of here. Or 40 days, as the latest thing I heard is going on. All that stuff doesn't fly. You better be ready to go in a moment, twinkling by at any moment. And you better not cut yourself any slack, or you'll be like Matthew chapter 24. You're going to find yourself in some difficult straits, or 25, the foolish version, or one taken, one left. Uh, you want to make sure the, you can't do anything that negates the any moment return of the Lord Jesus Christ, or does not fit the word of God. Okay, uh, we are looking at... Objection number eight. If you give me a few more minutes here, I'll see if I can finish up somewhat. All right. Objection number eight. Okay, this, uh, all the material that's on these uh, CDs uh, was due to 20 years of study. What does it mean? That's what it means. Doesn't mean a thing. That doesn't make it thus saith the Lord because you put 20 years in. If you take 20 years go down the wrong road, you're way down the wrong road. I mean, how do I know? I, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, uh, I ride the front seat, the back seat driving 
license. <laughs> uh, we're, we leave uh, Gene Finley down there. We're going to take a shortcut to go over to uh, either Leander's or Steve Bigler, Bigler's. So we thought we knew a shortcut. We got down the road. Man, we weren't even close. And we finally stopped, saw somebody, and said, uh, how do we get over here? Oh, you, you got to go that way. Well, she had turned the corner, and they were talked to him, so she's going to turn around. But we're out in the boonies. And we went around, 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 half a mile down the road. Finally, we found a place to turn around. We were way down. Man, we, we, we put twice as many miles on as we would if we just went regular way. We got there with double the miles. The other day, we're going to see Lee Island and Bruce, and uh, we were going up somewhere, and uh, so there's the road. And she passed it. She stopped right now. First driveway, backed up, turned around. We were right there. You see what 20 years is? It's like getting on out of there. Turn around. That doesn't really, because somebody put 20 years of time in it, that doesn't make it, thus saith the Lord, obviously. Objection, number nine, uh, have to do with uh, Dr. Ruckman's chart. I don't know if you all saw it. A lot of these folks have seen it across uh, the old cafetorium uh, down there. Uh, in all honesty, with the book of Revelation, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, second th it's endless. Even the Dr. Ruckman Bible uh all this stuff would have to be changed in all honesty. I trow not. Uh, objection, my side. Number 10. I uh, have to pass, you've got to pass over Genesis chapter 41 to teach this uh, three and a half crucifixion, church age, three and a half, only three and a half years tribulation left. You really... Uh, you have to pass over Genesis 41 as being no deal. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, which I was taught pictures tribulation. Or Genesis chapter 45, verse number 6, which deals with uh, two years of famine, yet there are five left. Not three and a half, three and a half, two and five. Equals seven. But you can pass them over being insignificant. That's what uh, that kind of thing does. Uh, it just, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't really uh, mean a whole lot. Objection number 11. Not important. We're going to be getting out of here anyhow. But it is important. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. If I allow that to be taught, plus what I taught, you all say... I don't know what they believe over there. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole, anything come in. Well, I mean, you can dispute anything, anything come in. Uh, doctrine, doctrine is so important that First and Second Timothy and Titus, and Timothy's a, his son of the faith, young son of the faith, and he emphasizes doctrine, 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 doctrine. You know what's important? Kristen, Allison, all these youngsters, that they learn right doctrine, sound doctrine. It's that important. It's not trivial. And obviously, if one says it's this way, and the other one says, nope, I believe it's straight seven years through. You're dealing with the 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 19 issue. There are heresies somewhere. They're not both right. One's right and one's not. There's some heresy somewhere. And uh, that's all I can say about it. Believe it or not, like it or not, that's what it amounts to. All right, so the idea is uh, the thing's got to be, the word's got to be rightly divided uh, as such. Uh, objection number 12. And uh, it goes this way. You know how the flesh is? It wants to be up here. It doesn't want to be down here. It wants to be up here. It don't even like being here. It wants to be up here. That's the flesh. And so when I say tip of the iceberg, because of the flesh, you're going to have all these Bible believers come up with one thing and another and another. And everybody, I mean, Dr. Ruckman hasn't even passed on. And everybody wants to be top banana. 
And so, get ready. You better know what you believe, why you believe it. And you better be able to say, no go. Don't work. Doesn't fit. And here's why it don't. You might have to weep. You might have to cry. You might have to sweat. You might have to wake up in your sleep. You might have to dream. And I, believe me, I've had about three weeks of that type of thing. I mean, I can't even lay down for a nap without, you know, something coming through. Uh, and nonetheless, a little leaven still leavens a whole lump. And the doctrine is that very, very important. Okay, I'm going to, the flesh, uh, keep it under. Uh, don't be uh, getting into uh, that kind of thing. Just be yourself. Let the Lord do what he's going to do. Uh, big guy, little guy, nothing matters. Uh, judgment seat of Christ, all that matters. What others think don't matter. Uh, the cutoff is not... Uh, John 1, verse 31. Uh, John preached the Lamb of God, Son of God, and I told you that, not the Messiah. Uh, the cutoff, so and so, uh, it deals with his death. We know that in Isaiah 53, and we are certain of that. Verse number 8. Uh, objection number 4. Uh, this simple thought that Phil gave to me, and the simple thought was that uh, uh, in John chapter 16, you have. Uh, that term a little while, and you have it seven times. And uh, seventh time, Lord Jesus Christ shows up. And there's nothing split about a little while, and you shall see me a little while, and you shall not see me a little while, and you shall see me. The, and on it goes, and seventh time, uh, a little while, and you shall see me, and your sorrow is going to turn to joy, and your joy no man taketh from you. Uh, I've talked to a few other preachers, uh, and I'm talking about some... Uh, uh, some pretty good fellows that don't have their heads stuck in the sand. And the one term was I looked at it and looked at it and I disagree completely with it. And the other one was I don't even want bothered. I believe just like the Bible says, 762 and 1. Uh, others' uh, comments have been uh, it doesn't work because of, and it is uh, a little more serious matter than what we make it. And therefore, I need to close because it is 8.30, simply to say that uh, maybe there's something there for you, at least the idea of don't buy everything that you hear, weigh some things out, and I'm not saying you've got to be Mr. Argumentative and dispute everything. But uh, I'll just simply say that here at, Bible, here at Bible Believers Baptist Church, our position is uh, that we are looking at uh, seven years after we get raptured out, uh, time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, yes, it gets uh, horrible at the middle of the tribulation, almost unbelievable. But you have seven years, just like Daniel said, and details, more details in Matthew and Luke, and more details in the book of Revelation, so you can go at it. I'm going to close by uh, I'll take this note here. Confliction. Well, I've certainly been that. Confusion. Not good, so the devil. And uh, so... Uh, because of what's out there, here we are, a minority, a very, very small minority, and fragmented. Who could do that? Who could pull that off? The devil. Uh, confusion, consideration. That term cut off, you know what it deals with. You know what it deals with. Consideration of John 16 issue. Uh, the covenant. There are no sign, no nothing. To say that he made some kind of covenant, no words, no words of the writing, no nothing. Signs does not equal a covenant. That, you can count on it. Uh, contention. The 2300 days, you cannot shove that into 1260. And it's this way. If we got to go... 1260, and we got to go two years, seven months, ten days before the temple's cleansed. You understand the millennium, you got temple worship. So, oh man, eat, drink, and be merry because we got two years before we could even worship in the temple. We got to 
two years to cleanse that baby. You know that don't work. You know that don't fly. So we'll just check that uh, off. We'll can, uh, that's uh, one of the contentions that uh, does not, the situation does not work. Confidence. At the conclusion of 20 years of work, you know what the conclusion was? It could be this, or it could be that. Wait a minute. After 20 years, it could be this, or it could be that. I would say something's wrong. Something's uh, wrong. But no more confidence than that. And I would say, in closing... The conclusion of the whole matter. Let's hear the con conclusion of the whole matter. A whole lot of confusion. And that's not of the Lord. Okay, if you have any questions, you can come to me. But uh, it's just something I need to deal with it. I had let it go for 10 years when it came right straight into my lap. When it came into the church, then I guess uh, might as well speak your peace. And however it goes, it goes. And if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to come to me and Maybe I can answer, maybe I can't. But that's uh, that's uh, stuff that I've looked at, listened to, weighed out, read and read and read and dreamed and dreamed and dreamed. And uh, maybe it'll be something for you. Dear Lord, thank you now for the Word of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for people that want to do right. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would, uh, by your Holy Spirit, Lord, and the Word of God, I pray you'd keep us from trying to stretch things trying to have some new doctrine, trying to supersede the last guy. Help be thankful for what we have and what we know for sure. May you add your blessing to what has been said, if you can, for there's anything there, Lord, that and I have made it clear, Lord, you make it clear. Those thoughts, Lord, are There's a bunch of them. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, sanctify them. I pray, Lord, you would make stick what needs stick. And I pray, Lord, that uh, division would not be part of this church here because of it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. The Bible says in Psalm 133 and verse number 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in and unity. And that includes unity of doctrine as well. When you can't get along uh, and you're looking at what one way and I'm looking at another way, it's just not going to fly. Uh, so uh, this is more important than what you really realize. Any questions, you can come to me and we'll call it it. Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks for being patient.